know Kawasaki did an awesome job with the KLX 250 and God knows how good this bike if this was a KLX 350 but don't let that hold you back the 250 is actually a very safe controllable power very easy for on technical rides very easy to crawl up things and it gives you so much confidence in the world to do a lot of things what's up everybody riding with will here and i have my klx 250 out here and uh i kind of wanted to do a review three things i love about the klx 250 as you guys know you know i have uh, a beta 350 double r the husqvarna drz and i test ride many bikes too so i've ridden a lot of bikes and i've taken to a lot of trails and so here's my my things about the klx about the things that i really love about it reliability you know it's plated but some of the main things that stick out stick out to me versus other like dual sports and stuff like that is uh is how comfortable it is from sitting on it to ergonomics to how it feels just the way it revs so out of all the bikes i've currently owned the klx 250 continues to be my favorite bike it's pretty crazy i know how, how is a four or five thousand dollar bike one of my favorites versus a ten thousand dollar bike comfort is a huge added benefit to riding this dual sport I, it is so comfortable and now where i'm riding right here Man, it's just, I can cruise on it all day, but on a two-stroke or my Beta 350 Double R, it, it doesn't feel the same after sitting on the seat or standing on it for a good hour or two. think uh, Kawasaki did an awesome job on the KLX 250 and just the way it was designed um, on handling uh, off-road trails it does really feel dirt bikey I must say this KLX 250 it is crazy how well it handles trails I've done anything everything from rocky trails to single track to some tighter turns and honestly it feels just like a dirt bike you can't even feel the weight it's pretty crazy. They really nailed it on uh, just how the, the bike reacts on tougher terrain. I, I took this KLX 250 on really technical trails and it handled it just fine. Yeah, like I've took, the, I've took this, this thing through some serious rock gardens and I'm not even that skilled of a rider. And dude, this thing, you know, it does really good. It, it handles rocks and, and all that stuff just fine. So you know what, I even decided to take the KLX 250 on some tight single track. No, I'm not talking about flowy but it was pretty tight handlebar tight with the trees and the sharp turns hopefully that kind of makes sense but i know video never does does justice but the klx 250 really handled it just fine i mean the turns are a little bit more delayed and a little, a little bit less planted than i would say like a te 250 or something made for tight single track but not much of a difference kawasaki really nailed it on this dual sport this is a do-it-all dual sport dirt bike enduro machine i guess you can say so good job kawasaki the third uh thing i wanted to talk about the klx 250 is power i know i made a, a video on three things i hate about the klx 250 and power was one of it lack of power or very controlled power is a good thing too you know it's awesome for new riders it really gives you confidence i'm so happy i started off on a klx 250 but the biggest mistake i did learn was uh the biggest mistake was i bought it brand new because it was efi carbureted and i didn't want to deal with any of that stuff so you guys heard it i love the power and i hate the power well this is when things get a little bit tricky see 
I think for a new rider or an intermediate rider, just getting the hang of things and getting ready to pick up speed on trails, a KLX 250 is all you ever need. See, however, on the road and also on uphill sections, like let's say in Colorado, we have really steep trails. And sometimes I have to be only on first gear because if I slow down, I have to downshift and upshift and downshift and upshift and it gets really annoying. While a DRZ400 on second gear could just chuck up almost everything no problem. So when is a lack of power ever a good thing? Well, for sure, without a doubt, new riders, you never have to worry about, you know, the bike throwing you off anywhere or accidentally you whiskey throttle something. You never have to worry about that. On the Beto 350 Double R, yeah, if you give it a handful of throttle, that thing will definitely send you to the ambulance room. And that is not a pretty sight. And also, to be honest, you don't need that much more power on a KLX 250. I mean, I'm no faster on my 350 Double R, the Beta, or the Husky TE 250i on versus the KLX 250. I'm exactly the same speed. There is no difference. So for new intermediate riders, you really don't need anything new. I mean, if you were racing, have a lot of experience, and definitely can really feel the KLX 250 slow you down, yeah, it might be time for a new bike. But till then, here I am, I'm almost a year in into dirt biking or dual sport riding, and I'm telling you right now, you don't need a Husky TE250i or a Beta 350 Double R or the KTM. It will not make you a better rider. The KLX 250 is all you need. And honestly, there's a lot of slow riders out there, and I don't mean like slow, like you're not very good. I mean like they just like putting around and you know, on the, like being on the safe side. And the KLX 250 might be all you ever need. But anyhow, if you guys like this content, go ahead and subscribe and I'll catch you guys on my next video.